Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Elder Scrolls Legends video. I'm Furu, and today I present to you another deck. A deck that was working really good for me over the last couple of days, and that's why I will show you the deck. So it's a control warrior deck using uh, the Unstoppable Rage for the endgame, and also it's kind of an anti-fun police deck, because you are not really trying to have the most value on the board, but you are more or less trying to devalue what your opponent is doing. And you're doing this with multiple cards in your deck. So first of all, you have support destruction, which is the archer here, that is destroy an enemy support or you deal one damage. You have support destruction in form of the shadow and priest that can silence another creature or destroy an enemy support. You have then uh, more silencer in form of the earthbone spinner. So silence another creature, then deal one damage to it. So silence, silence, support destruction, pretty good. Plus, you also have um, kind of cards that are getting rid of big targets from your opponents and also you cannot um, resummon them or so. That is, first of all, the Mummify. You will transform a creature into a 2-2 Shriveled Mummy. That's pretty good if your opponent has a big creature on the board. So this one is down, plus it's a Prophecy. Pretty, pretty good overall if your opponent is playing Parthenax. How about you just play a Shriveled Mummy and boom, Parthenax is just a 2-2. No effect anymore. If he's resurrecting that, he's still just getting the Mummy on the board. So that is decent for you, decent value. And there is another card that is doing more or less exactly the same. And that is the Hallowed Death Priest, 5 Magicka, 3-5. Summon transform the highest cost creature in your opponent's hand into a shriveled mummy. You are normally playing the Hello Death Priest uh, when you have a feeling that your opponent has some, some big creatures in his hand. Or, for example, you can do that pretty, pretty good if um, you, you have a chance to, to kill a few of the runes, then your opponent is getting more cards into the hand, so a higher chance that he has something big into his hand. And then the Hello Death Priest is trying to kill some, some decent cards like Order Wing, like Parthenax, whatever, all the big cards. Uh, good targets for the Hallowed Death Priest. Um, even if you are just facing a token deck or so, even then the Hallowed Death Priest can at least get rid of a Hive Defender, so, so some of the annoying cards or Pit Line maybe. So even if he's just playing small creatures, Hallowed Death Priest might find a bit of value. Uh, if he's trying to get a great effect unit on the board, then at least that is denied and he just has a mummy. So all in all, um, you are really just trying to annoy your opponent, get rid of his units of his value if he's playing support you destroy that if he has big creatures you are destroying the big creatures and if he's just an aggressive deck for that you have a lot of guards here protector of the innocent dark guardian barrow stalker so a bit of drain you have galene that allows you to create more guards if you need to you have the morgul gatekeeper pyromancers you have all the tools that you need against aggressive decks so to survive until the end game to the mid game because that is where your deck is shining uh, and against more greedy decks, you just have the tools to, to get rid of the, the greedy cards. So then you are the one that has the greedy cards because in your end game, please let me go to the top and the bottom. So in your end game, you have double blood magic lords, you have night talent lord, vigilant giants too, and unstoppable rage. So um, a lot of tools for you to create value. For example, you can use the rage on the night talent lord if the board is full, and then you are draining and all the slain creatures you will then resummon on your side of the board so that is more often gg than not if your knight talent lord can be used with unstoppable range normally the game is decided at that point because you will potentially get 20 to 30 life back and you will potentially get two to four units on your side and then expect to see a concede from your opponent that's really fun I have a lot of success for the deck right now also a new card cradle crush giant is pretty pretty damn good uh, because against more aggressive decks normally the warrior was missing out a bit of tools for the for the mid game kind of you needed to wait until there was unstoppable rage but the giant is coming two turns earlier and dealing two damage to all other creatures in this lane helps tremendously against aggressive decks if they are trying to overrun you the giant is totally good for two to three kills without any problem keep in mind he's also dealing the damage to your own creatures so um be careful here don't lose too much, but normally you should not because your creatures have kind of a high health. So overall, pretty good deck. I will now show you a bit of gameplay. If you have questions left, there is a comment section below. I'm totally here to help you. So feel free to use that and now check out some gameplay. All right, guys, let's start against the battle mage. So we might see some items, might see some prophecies. Uh, good stuff happening. Battle mage right now is a very strong, I would say. Definitely a deck that you can reach uh, high legend spots with. I think I only played one. I think I and Bits played one into the top 10 so far. So we're going second. Have the Gatekeeper, have the Archer, have the Night Shadow. 
I don't like any of these cards for the start, so we're just redrawing, getting three new cards. Holy shit. So now we have a 7 Magicka, 8 Magicka, 9 Magicka creature. Hmm, sounds like a very good start. So also we got the 5 Magicka creature. How about that? So we have something to play on turn 4. Luckily our opponent is not starting very aggressive, so that should help us a lot. Now Earthborn Spinner can be played next turn, so far there is nothing played from our opponent's side, so if he's going for a unit now, we can play the Earthbound Spinner and crush that, dropping a Withered Hand Cultist. Mm, to be honest, not too dangerous for us. I might still just drop the Earthbound Spinner here, just in case, or for, for later in the game, right? If we do not like that, if we want to play a Rage or so on 8, I totally do not want to see a Withered Hand Cultist here. Also, if he's going for the Withered Hand Cultist, that looks more like an aggressive deck, more like a mid-range deck. And then it is totally good for us that he was, okay, that he was just starting very, very slow. Otherwise, we would have definitely a problem. The Archer, let's drop that. Hit for the Withered Hand Cult so we can kill this. Uh, depending on what kind of deck he's playing, opponent, he might go for some Corsair ships. So uh, we kind of want the enemy support destruction still available. But right now, that was totally the right way to do just kill the withered hand cultists otherwise you just take too much damage so you cannot just keep the archer a bit longer so until he's dropping the support if he's going for support but that just looks like a very aggressive mid-range deck so a bit of a problem for us right now we have nothing really to stop that train what we can do is drop a sword of revenge he's still hitting me in the face for five and of course if the sword of revenge is going down yeah, we are taking, or he is taking 5 damage and then he's getting another card, so that's also not the best option we have. On the other hand, I think we, we're not dropping the Yellow Death Priest right now. So potentially just dropping Soul of Avenge. He's getting the 5 into his face next turn, for sure, and uh, in that case we can then also hit the 3, it doesn't matter. He's, he's getting that rune anyway, if the Soul of Avenge is going down. And then he's getting extra card and we can play Hello Death Priest and hopefully picking up something huge here but if he's playing mid-range something huge might be coming right now but so just another five on the face luckily oh that is very good we got a mummify here blood dragon is down to a small small unit which also means that sort of revenge has a chance the to survive another turn and that is indeed helping me kinda so we are losing the guard on the other hand he's also not taking damage so with that right now with the board as it is we could then go Nargleet next turn. We can just play the Hell of Death Priest and deal a bit of damage in the face. That's another option here. Just give him one card, play Hell of Death Priest. And I might just do that. So let's kill this. We are dealing the three in the face. Unfortunately, he's getting a Prophecy. Not the greatest option for me. RP. Hmm. Okay, we still play Hello Death Priest and we still go for Protector and we hit the jackpot. Have you seen that? We crushed the Merrick, which he wanted to play next turn for sure. That's why everything was there on the right lane. So we'll the Merrick the is gone. Pretty, pretty good. Would have been a lot of damage. And uh, now we have a little protection here. So he's just running with the Harpy most likely into the Protector. And then it's potentially still five in the face. So if he's, he's using that on the Protector, really? Oh, wow. He is really greedy, so if he's just hitting face, now we can go Rage and kill everything. Might just do that. Just so that everything is going down. Let's see, is there anything better to do right now? We can just kill one unit and this is Breakthrough, so yeah, I think we're just going Rage. Just going for the Rage. And I don't think I will give you anything else, so we just play the Rage here, kill everything and pass. That's it. There's no need to push damage right now in his face. We were only dealing the damage earlier because of the extra damage from the Sova. Because he was still getting the the rune here. And then he silenced. And then there was just the need to hit because we had the Hallow Death Priest. So there's no need right now to attack. You can just leave him at 24. And it, it's all in the end game. The end game is where we are shining. So don't just give him too many cards here, please. The Pyromancer, 5-1 is down. This one is getting the Tomb of Alteration. And the mummy. So there is one item in his hand and two unknown cards. We have the Vigilant Giant, which can be good enough against these. On the other hand, we could also just play Barrow Stalker left side and then triple triple guards. That's also not too bad. So we would get um, life back, hopefully next turn. And uh, he might lose two units here and keep one on the board. 
That could be good. I mean, if he's going for double pyromancers here, already played one, then he could crush all the little guards. That would be the worst. Everything else should be fine. The other option would be a giant. If he's playing the giant, he would also crush all those little guards. Uh, still, I like that more. Try that. So, just triple protect of the innocent. Barrel stalker left side. Hope to drain a bit. And we're just hoping he's not dropping double pyromancers or dropping the giant here. But if he's going for the giant, it also means he's still losing two units. Because he can push a bit more on the face. And he's kind of interested in killing the, the barrel stalker with the drain. But just to keep that in mind. If he, if he has something to kill the Barrel Stalker, he's potentially using that, so less Magicka to deal with the right side, and then maybe just every unit is going down, and he's losing more cards. Investing Tom of Alteration. So, at least one unit will survive right now. So, it looks like he needs to trade, which is good, I think. And there's a Lightning Bolt, so, yep, at least the Lightning Bolt's not hitting the face. So, isn't that good? Dark Guardian. Option number one, Dark Guardian, Morgul Gatekeeper. That bot kind of makes it so that he cannot deal any sort of damage. If he has another Giant, for example, it is safer for us to drop Dark Guardian and Morgul Gatekeeper than just dropping the Giant. On the other hand, Giant is just more expensive. We still have then one left. If we get a Rapid Shot, we can kill the 4-1. So we get an Archer, which would also be good enough to kill the 4-1, of course. So let's just pass here. Already played one Giant. The chance to have another one is, of course, reduced. It depends on how many giants he will play in the long run. If he's going for three, there are still two left, but also there are 35 cards left. So you cannot really expect to see another giant right now. You just count the probabilities here together. The bad thing about uh, the big giant is that we would deal a lot of damage if we kill the dagger for mage, so he's getting another card. I mean, we can't just deny that with the Archer. So far, we have not seen single support, though there might not be the Corsair ship in his deck. But it could be in the deck, just at the bottom of the deck. So maybe you want to keep the, the Archer. Dagger of Mage running to this. Morgul Gatekeeper. Okay, you just take another six. And a Wardcrafter. You might still take another six. So if we go Archer. Archer, the Guardian, and Gatekeeper, maybe. He's having a lot of guards then. Or Pyromancer, even. Pyromancer might be even better. Let's so we're gonna crush and then dealing a bit of damage in the face, I think, just in case. So if there are some prophecies, we're also dropping the Guardian here. Maybe get an extra card, and apparently we get an extra card. What do you have for me? If that's a Harpy, we might just play the Archer. It's a Circle Initiate. We draw a Barrow Stalker. It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I totally like to drop another guard. So the thing is, he's most likely dealing some sort of damage in the face to make this a 4 3. So, how about just dropping Barrow Stalker left side? That'd be okay. Pyromancer. You still need more. Without hand cards, the Barrow Stalker is still surviving. And we have an easy time here to kill everything. If we go Morgul Gatekeeper, for example. So then we drain for four, killing both units. This one is also dying and he's down to one card. So I think at this point uh, the game is decided because we are playing a very greedy deck. So there is no way that he's overcoming the greed in the end. He lost Merrick. We are still at 11. Yeah, this one is down. So tough times indeed. Close ranks. Let nothing through. Wrong place for a kill, kill. Back to 15. Can even deal a bit more on the face, I think. We can go for two here. That's okay. And then how about uh, the Nargleaf? And passing the next turn. Blood Magic Lord. And with that we might see a Conceit. If you push the two in the face, he would be at 14. Then you have enough to kill him next turn. On the other hand, you give him another card. So more risks and I don't like risks. So I don't think there is a need to do that. Sandal Battle Mace. Hmm. So you, th you say we are not playing the Blood Magic Lord? Not doing that, you say? Oh well, whatever. So I'll give you the Archer. We must protect our strong. Gonna crush the Protector, no problem. And then how about a bit in the face, seeing if he's getting Prophecy, seeing if we get extra cards, and then um, deciding if we go Enchanted Plate or not. So let's just start with 7 here. No Prophecy apparently for you. I'll kill you, where you oh, well, this game is over, isn't it? 
So nothing for you. And then let's use the enchanted plate here just on the Naglif. Doesn't doesn't really matter, the game's decided. The mummify, great. So we can then also just pass, keeping the gatekeeper and winning on the next turn against the battle mage. Ooh, a greedy, greedy giant. Gives me the Naglif back. Guess what? We still have enough. The battle is oh yeah, we still have enough, and there's a conceit. So winning of this game. For our second game, the opponent is using a spell sword, so it could be mid-range spell sword, and it could also be a bit of a more greedy version of the spell sword. So regardless of what he's playing, normally we are we are in a good spot, I would say. If, if the beginning is not too bad. So I think Dark Guardian is fine. We might keep the Earthman Spinner. I do not like the Gatekeeper for the start. So Earthman Spinner might be good against uh, a few of the cards, depending on what he's playing. So that could also, of course, be a token spell sword. But that is definitely rarer, because normally if you want to play a token deck, Mage or Crusader is the better option. Or even um, the, the token Monk. I think that's stronger than the token spell sword in general. And if he's going super greedy, then the Archer is helpful. So, we are seeing some tokens, but just like I mentioned, token spell sword is not as good as the other decks. And it's still, it's still okay, but the other decks are a tiny bit better, so funny that we're seeing a token spell sword. Let's see. I'm still positive. So, most often, because we have tools like a Pyromancer, because we have the Archer, Earthbound Spinner, so we should be fine. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, so he's starting on turn 2 with a Blood Pack Messenger. That's an unusual card, so it gives him some extra cards to draw, but we hope to deny that with a Dark Guardian. So, depending on what he's playing here, maybe that's not super token? I don't know, he could play Execute then as well, but just to deal the damage in the face. Oh, he's going for Latus Age. Okay, stealing the guard, so he can draw the cards. This one isn't dying at the end of the turn, Sacrifice. And uh, the Dark Guardian is unfortunately a bit too small here to kill the Oculatus agent. So what we can do, on the other hand, is uh, just dropping the Archer. We must protect Get this throne. for one, and then we can kill the Oculatus agent. And there's still two units on the board, that's why I thought about killing one of the smaller units. And instead, leave that here. So right now we can play Pit Line, for example. Which would be a bit of a problem, on the other hand, because we have a Mummify. We can uh, more or less counter the Pit Line. If that is his big card here. And then we can still kill the, the two small tokens that are on the board right now. And I would expect that he's dropping the pit line. Kind of on the left side to kill the three here. There's a plan. There's always a it is plan. not a pit line. It's There's just double broomers. Oh, fine by me. Totally fine by me. Oh, Earthbound Spinner. I don't think there is a need right now. I think you can get a bit more life. That should be fine. I mean, his strategy could be, of course, to just play Golden Sane. But for that, I think we are going Hello Death Priest. They're so gonna nice. crush the smaller units right now, and then we can kill the Bruma anyway next turn. We will then also drop the Hello Death Priest, going for the left side for now. Hitting Imperial Siege Engine, interesting. So the Imperial Siege Engine is a card that buffs every other friendly creature, and the more units he then has, the better it is. Also because that is the biggest card, that means there is no Golden Sane right now in his hand. And I, I don't think he wanted to play the Siege Engine really. It's just two creatures. This one is dying anyway to the Archer. I mean, he could have saved the right one, but was it worth it to play it? Training I don't think so. It's Legion Trainer, target for the Earthbound Spinner for sure. Oh, Shadow Mare. Hello, Shadow Mare. Oh, that's fine. So I'll just, just get more life. You're running out of cars anyway. Pyromancer. And Soul of Avenge. So I totally like to deny the effect here. So I think we are going for the Earthbound Spinner. We're killing the Bruma here. We kill the Bruma on the right side as well. I mean, the other option is just go Mummify, but I don't think we want to. With two cards right now, how much value are you getting? The Sova would be stronger, right? Sova would be the stronger play right now. So maybe we can wait. With just three cards next turn, sure he cannot do that much, right? There would be, uh, let's see, reinforcements, but then we have just the Pyromancer to counter that. The Golden Sane, so he got it. Damn you. I mean, it runs down, he loses the Sova. On the other hand, he's also not getting a card. So still everything is fine. Wanna crush you. No problem, no problem. 
How about the, the giant could crush everything on the left side? How about that? Yeah, let's just do it. Kill everything so he just has one attack. Doesn't matter. And again, he just had three cards, so he should not be doing too much. Again, if he's going for the Clockwork Apostle now, buffing this little unit, then we go for the Earthbound Spinner. Or we go for the Mummify. Oh, it's just a sticky work spider. Interesting. No oh, one, there's something that we totally want to crush. Uh, protector is all right, for sure. All right. And another protector. Hmm. Still down to one. Still down to one. How about it's time for the Earthbound Spinner, isn't it? It is time for the Earthbound Spinner. Let's go. So you're not taking the effect any longer. We will drop Protector. I mean, the spider here is interesting. So whenever he's now summon a spider, he's summoning also all the spiders out of the discard pile. And because there is a little, little buff from the Divine, then yeah, the spiders are getting uh, really big. I mean, we have the giants and the giants are definitely good enough to kill every spider if he's not dropping another Divine. Um, so far, I think uh, we are not, not behind or something. We have enough cards in hand. One divine is totally okay. If, if he's getting two, then uh, we might be in trouble. But even then, right now he just has two cards, and that's a problem, kind of the the spell sword. And he's not drawing that many cards, like a crusader, for example. Barrel stalker is good. So how about? Do we need rain right now? I don't think so. And I will also not give you cards. I will just stop the vigilant. Draw an extra card in my hand. We get the mummify. Cool. So enjoy that. I will not give you a card. We have double mummifies to counter whatever he can drop. We have really strong creatures at hand. So if we just go now, leave Barrow Stalker. That's already pretty good. We have currently then also 17 damage on the board. I think we are on the next turn just going face. Yeah, so if he's not dropping anything here, we're just going face. But nothing too dangerous that can spawn. So we can just go face, push a lot of damage in his face. And it should be good, right? We have this over here, would be good for more damage. So how about dropping this on the board, going for the little girl, and then the game is potentially over next turn. You really cannot expect to see a Dawn's here in his deck, he's playing token deck, and yeah, he's doing nothing. So just another easy victory, and again, our deck has the most fun here. So let's do three, let's do eight, and win. GG, sir. Makes it 2-0, and I'm still waiting for defeat here and there with the deck, so it's still working really, really good. And if you want to try it, the deck list is on the right, also the deck list is in the video description and you can find the deck on Legends deck. So if you want to try it out, just do it. It's pretty good, fun to play against a lot of decks right now on the ladder. Also I'm nearly ranked 2, so good game for me. Plus, uh, if you like it, if you want to change anything, I just give me feedback. You can do that in the comment section, you can do that on Legends decks in the, in the deck section. Or you can just write me on Twitter or whatever you like. So I will see it and I might answer you if I have time. So normally I have time. Just just comment and I will answer you. Uh, thanks for watching until the end. Um, also would be appreciated if you can hit the like button or subscribe to the channel. And I will then see you in the next video for The Elder Scrolls Legends. Have a great weekend.